I do know what I did was wrong. I really hope Addie's okay. And I've known Keegan since kindergarten. <laughs> Michael was one of my classmates. Um, I'm really sorry. Cohen Thomas is age 18, loving son, brother, grandson, and friend was taken away too early in his life. Cohen lost his life on April 24th, 2023 as a result of injuries he sustained in a car accident involving a drunk driver. Cohen was born on January 26, 2005 to Elizabeth and Adam. Uh, I have some very bad news and there's no good way to tell you this. Um, your son Cohen was killed in a car crash. Cohen was a quiet but successful um, leader. A drunk driver to know Cohen uh, was to love him. Your son's vehicle and he was killed. Um, on Cohen Sunday. was one of the hardest working people around and was always there to lend a hand no matter what someone needed. Kaya Danielle Burks, 17 of Flora, Indiana, died April 24th, 2023 as a result of injuries sustained in a motor vehicle accident involving a drunk driver. Um, there is no good way to tell you this, but uh, your daughter, she was killed in a car crash uh, this morning. Kai was born on April 12, so, so 2006 uh, in Lafayette, Indiana, to Steve and Misty Burke. She came into this world a fighter and a heart full is of love. Is there someone I can call for you? Lily Ann Jackson, 17 of Burlington, Indiana, died April 24, 2023 as, on April 24th, as a result of injuries sustained in a car accident as a result of injuries sustained driving. in a drunk driving accident on her way to school. County and its medics fire requested to be en route to Carroll High School for a mock crash multiple injuries, one known ejection, timeout 13, 14. Carroll County, 14, 18, 3, 
all right? Now, I want you to follow the tip of my pen with your eyes only, okay? And don't move your head, all right? Don't move your head. Same right here, okay? Take a really deep breath. Make tight seal on this, and we'll as hard as you can touch. I just stop, okay? Wait till I tell you to go. Step over here. Okay. Will you let me know when they left off? Yeah, I got something to read to you, okay? This is OHC01-2304-F4-345, State of Indiana versus Emily N. Kahlo. Are you Emily N. Kahlo? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you currently under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. What are you under the influence of? Alcohol. Okay. Emily, you understand the purpose of today's hearing, is that correct? So you're in Carroll County Circuit Court for an initial hearing on a criminal case. As a defendant in a criminal case, you're afforded certain constitutional and statutory rights. You currently have retained an attorney, Mr. Hughes. Do you understand that if in the future you are unable to hire counsel, uh, that the court may appoint an attorney, possibly at no expense to you? Yes, sir. Right. Mr. Hughes, you've reviewed the advisement of rights with your client, and do you wish to waive that at this time? We so waive, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Ms. Uh, you were charged with three counts. Count one is causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, a level four felony. A level four felony is punishable by a penalty of two to 12 years in the Indiana Department of Corrections and a maximum fine of $10,000. Do you understand the potential penalty for count one? Yes, sir. Count one states as follows. On April 24th, 2023, in the county of Carroll, state of Indiana, Emily N. Kamalo did cause the death of Michael Lee Carey when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more. I'm not asking you if you agree with these charges, but do you understand what is alleged in count one? Sure. Count two is causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, also a level four felony. A level four felony is punishable by a penalty of two to 12 years in the Indiana Department of Corrections and a maximum fine of $10,000. Do you understand the potential penalty for count two? Yes, sure. Count two reads as follows. On April 24th, 2023, in the county of Carroll, state of Indiana, Emily N. Coslow did cause the death of Keegan Drake Meyer when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, 
I'm not asking you if you agree or disagree, but do you understand what is being alleged in count two? Yes, Your Honor. Count three is causing serious bodily injury when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, which is a level five felony. A level five felony is punishable by one to six years in the Indiana Department of Corrections and a potential fine of $10,000. Do you understand the potential penalty for count three? Count three states as follows. On April 24th, 2023, in the county of Carroll, state of Indiana, Emily N. Cosmo did cause serious bodily injury to Madeline Marie Deringid when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more. Do you understand what's been alleged in count three? Yes, sir. Mr. Hughes, how does your client wish to plead to these counts? Judge, we would enter a plea guilty to counts one through three. All right. Would you please raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Okay. Do you understand that by pleading guilty you give up all the rights I just explained? Yes, sir. Do you understand that the charges to which you are pleading guilty are count one, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, a level four felony? Yes, sir. Count two, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, a level four felony? And count three, causing serious bodily injury when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, a level five felony. Yes, sir. Do you understand that by pleading guilty you are admitting that you committed the crimes that you were charged with? Yes, sir. Do you understand that by pleading guilty you'll be judged guilty and sentenced without any trial? Yes, sir. Do you understand that the basic sentences for the crimes you are charged with is a minimum of two years and a maximum of 12 years for the level four felonies, and a minimum of one year and a maximum of six years for the level five felony? The maximum consecutive sentence that could be ordered would be 15 years in this case. Do you understand? Do you still want to plead guilty at this time? Yes, sir. As to count one, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. As to count two, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. As to count three, causing serious bodily injury when operating a vehicle with an ACE of .08 or more, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Mr. Hughes, would you please present a factual basis for the court? Yes, Your Honor. Emily, can you please state your full name for the record? Uh, Emily Nicole Kanata. I want to draw your attention to count one, causing death when operating a vehicle with an alcohol concentration equivalent of .08 or more, a level four felony. On or about April 24th of 2023, were you here in Carroll County, State of Indiana? Is it? Yes. Okay. And on that date and location, um, did you cause the death of a Michael Lee Beery by operating a vehicle? Yes. And prior to operating that vehicle, you consumed alcohol, is that correct? Yes. And you consumed a sufficient amount that your alcohol concentration equivalent was more than .08, is that correct? Yes. More specifically, you submitted to a certified breath test with the result of that test being a .13, is that correct? Yes. Drawing your attention to count two, same date and location as count one, you would agree with me that you operated a vehicle that ultimately caused the death of a Keegan Drager, is that correct? Yes. And that also on the same date and location of counts one and two, you would agree with me that you operated a vehicle and you caused serious bodily injury to a Madeline Marie, is that correct? Yes. Emily, if I understand you correctly, you're admitting to all material elements and allegations contained in counts one through three are pleading guilty because you're in fact guilty and waiving any defenses there too. Is that correct? Yes. Judge, I don't have any further questions. You can get uh, IV stuff set up and air
there, kind of moans a little bit. I don't know the extent of her injuries right now, but we actually checked her out. Yeah. We love you very much. Thank you. We're going to be right here, okay? We love you so much. The court accepts the plea of guilty and finds Emily in guilty of count one, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of 0.08 or more. Count two, causing death when operating a vehicle with an ACE of 0.08 or more. And count three, causing serious bodily injury when operating a vehicle with an ACE of 0.08 or more. Is it the court's understanding that a limited PSI has been conducted and we're ready to move on to sentencing today? That is correct, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. Or, thank you, State and Defense. This is the sentencing hearing in the same cause number, State of Indiana versus Emily N. Coughlow. State of Indiana appears by Jerry Bean, Chief Deputy Prosecuting Attorney. Defendant appears in custody and by Shay Hughes. Mr. Bean, does the state have any evidence to present as it relates to sentencing? Yes, Judge, if I may. Could you raise your right hand? Can you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. Can you state your name, please? I'm Jamie Justice. And Ms. Patterson, are you related to one of the individuals who was either hurt or killed in this in this cause of action? Yes, sir. Who are you, who are you related to? Um, mother of Michael Perry. And is there something that you would like the court to be aware in his imposing sentence in this case? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted, I don't know if you have the opportunity to meet my son. He was a good kid. Loved his family, loved his friends. A decision that you decided to make that you thought was okay is going to impact me, my family, and his friends, and his siblings for the rest of our lives. You'll have the opportunity. You may get 12 years, you may get 15 years, but then you get to do your life over. And my son does. And his friends that were killed doesn't. And I hope at some point during your time you're able to reflect and go out and hopefully prevent anything like this ever happening again. Michael was a good kid. He impacted a lot of people, had a love for family and life and friends. And there's going to be people that suffer way beyond this. And my hopes is, is that the realization is this could have easily been prevented. One stupid decision took my kid's life, and I'll never get that back. You'll get yours back. And I hope at some point you'll be able to make an impact that's in a positive light. That's all, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Any questions for this witness? No, Your Honor. You can step down, ma'am. Could you raise your hand, please, Lauren? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, Judge. Would you state your name for the record, please? Kelly Sure. And you are Keegan's mom, is that right? Yes. And as such, is there something you would like to make the court aware to, for him to consider an imposing sentence in this case? Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know if you know, but Keegan just celebrated his 18th birthday three days ago. Um, Keegan's such a good, good boy. Um, he has the biggest heart. 
um, I call him a giant teddy bear because he loves his friends. Um, and I'm sure you know him well. He was with you in the car. Um, we were looking forward to prom this week. Um, he's not going to get to go to his junior prom. He's not going to get to go to his senior prom. He's not going to get to graduate. And I'm sure knowing him, um, he would defend his friends to the utmost degree and would probably be here defending you as well. Um, he, he just has the biggest heart. And I too understand uh, one, one decision and um, you forget what, how, or how much that can impact somebody else. And um, you get to make more decisions, but Keegan doesn't. And I hope, I just pray that you will remember this and remember that all these kids' decisions were taken away and you have a chance to make things better. You can make better choices. You can impact other kids, other adults, hopefully to not make that same bad decision. Um, Keegan loves with all his might and we will remember that. And um, I just, I just, I pray for you and your family because this is awful, this is, this is awful, and I can't even imagine what you're going through, but um, I don't know what it's gonna be like to not have him up in his room in the morning and wake him up for school tomorrow. That's I don't have any other evidence. I do not have any other evidence, it's my understanding that the parents of uh, Madeline Carney are at the hospital any other just briefly, Judge, I would just like to call the father of my client. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you could raise it right now. You swear or affirm on your family's a perjury, but what you say will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Thank you, Judge. Sir, can you please say your name for the record? Coleman Cogswell. And Mr. Cogswell, you are the father of Emily Cogswell, is that correct? Yes. And you've prepared a statement here today, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and can you please provide your statement to the court? Yeah, um, myself and her mother are here. Uh, it's, Emily's always been a good, great student. She's always been mature and responsible. Uh, for her age. She's never been in any trouble of any kind. Um, she has a big heart. She has a kind heart. She would never hurt anybody intentionally. However, today she made a choice to drink and drive and endanger not only her life but the lives of others. Teenage drinking combined with freedom that comes with a driver's license is a lethal combination. It puts young adults in the position to make poor decisions that will forever impact their lives and for those people around them. We all need to do better and understand the underlying influences of teenage drunk driving and better educate our children on the dangers of alcohol. And peer pressure. Nothing we can say will take away the, the pain from these families today and are ongoing, but sending Emily to jail will not lessen their pain. We intend to uh, enroll Emily in uh, therapy and substance abuse classes so that she may fully understand and deal with the consequences of her actions. Um, as she too will have to live with the pain and guilt this horrible tragedy has caused. We are pleading with the court for leniency for her uh, first offense ever. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Dean, any questions? No, Your Honor. Ms. Hodges, uh, well, what would you say if you were in Ms. Jones' and Ms. Nervous shoes? Pretty much the same thing that they, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a tragedy. It's, it's overall, it's just a tragedy. I just, I think more education would be able to help everybody out down the road and, and I can't even imagine what they're going through.
You may be seated. No further evidence, Your Honor. Argument from the defense? Judge, I'm not really sure what to say. I understand where uh, the victim's families are coming from. Um, and the court has every right to sentence my client to prison for an extended period of time. But I would echo the sentiment of her father uh, that given her age, that given her lack of criminal history, that the court consider that in fashioning a sentence. The only thing that I can add, Judge, is I hope my client understands that this type of offense is the Russian roulette of crimes. There are some nights where you get home safely, but there are other nights where this occurs and you have a tremendous impact not only on families, but on the community as well. And I hope she learns from this. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Judge, for the police court. I would start off by saying that the victim's families are much more forgiving than I would be if it were my little girl. We talk about a momentary lapse in judgment. She chose to go to a party. She chose to drink enough over a long enough period of time and was drinking hard liquor in order to get to a 1-3. Then, knowing that, she gets behind the wheel of a car and she picks up a friend of hers and drives drunk and is headed to school where there, she knows, are lots of cars and lots of kids and she ignores all of that. This isn't like it was 40 years ago when I started or we kind of winked and nodded about OWIs. People who got caught drunk, they were even taken home by law enforcement. Those days, thankfully, are long since gone. And I can't, I just can't believe that she hasn't heard or seen or knows that what she did was wrong. She was in a position of trust for the young man that was in her car that she killed. And it just scares me, it scares me when counsel talks about Russian roulette. Who in their right mind is going to play Russian roulette? Especially with somebody else's life. And their own. She needs treatment. I don't doubt that. Treatment she can get from the DOC. She doesn't have any history, and we talked about her age. But I would submit to the court that age is a two-edged sword. Not only did she consume alcoholic beverages to the point where she was intoxicated and killed people, she shouldn't be drinking at all. She's under 21 years old. So when the judge, when the court looks at aggravators and, and mitigators, This was preventable. It was absolutely preventable. But there was only one person who could have prevented it, and that's the defendant. And she chose not to. Maybe it was peer pressure, maybe it wasn't. Don't know, didn't hear from her. <coughs> but what will happen the next time? Is she gonna get behind the wheel of a car? Is she gonna learn anything? Is she gonna kill somebody else? Your Honor, for those reasons, I would submit that aggravators outweigh the mitigators. The state would submit that she be sentenced to six years on count one, six years on count two, two years on count three, and that uh, all of those years be ordered served at the Department of Correction, and that they run consecutively. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Bean. Ms. Gosselin, do you have an opportunity to make a statement prior to sentencing? Is that something you would like to do? Um, I just want to say I'm sorry to the parents of Michael, Keegan, and Maddie. Um, I'm really sorry. And I do know what I did was wrong. 
and I really hope Addie's okay. Uh, me and her used to do cheer together. And I've known Keegan since kindergarten. <laughs> Michael was one of my classmates. Um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and they shouldn't forget me. I don't think they should. But I just wanted to say I'm sorry. And I don't know what happened. No, Your Honor. The court will find the following aggravating factors um, that she was in a position of trust over Mr. Burge um, and that she was underage and the consumption of alcohol at her age um, was unlawful to begin with. Um, the court will find the following mitigating factors that uh, the defendant has shown remorse uh, and that she has pled guilty for these crimes. The court will find that the aggravators outweigh the mitigators and sentence her as follows. As a count one, the defendant shall be sentenced to the advisory sentence of six years executed to the Indiana Department of Corrections. As a count two, the defendant shall be sentenced to the advisory sentence of six years executed to the Department of Corrections. As a count three, the defendant shall be sentenced to the advisory sentence of three years executed. The defendant may serve the executed sentence of count three on community corrections at a level to be determined by the executive director. The sentences for all three counts shall be cons served consecutively for a total sentence of 15 years with 12 years at the Indiana Department of Corrections followed by three years community corrections. The defendant is hereby remanded to the care and custody of the Carroll County Sheriff's Department. Anything further from defense? No, Your Honor. The state? No, Your Honor. Thank you. That will conclude today's hearing.